country. One last issue before I let you go. You've also said that you'll hold a referendum on gay marriage. For that next generation, should they be allowed to be gay in Barbados? Sorry? Should people in Barbados be allowed to be gay, to be homosexual? Is that a question you would ask the United Kingdom? Well, we have laws on gay marriage, and you're having a referendum on gay marriage, so it is pertinent. I think that that is the most inappropriate question as to whether a person should be allowed to be gay. I think the question is, should we discriminate against people because they're gay? And we will not. And we are absolutely clear that Barbados became the first black slave society and a country that has known what it is to discriminate against citizens for centuries cannot in today's world be discriminating against any human being for any reason whatsoever. So homosexuality will be legal in Barbados, as will gay marriage? I said that a country that discriminates against people will not do it. Um, that has discriminated against people in the past. But what is more, um, the government is resolute that marriage is a function of the church. And to that extent, a referendum will be held to allow all parties to determine whether they will speak on the church or not, um, on the marriage or not. But with respect to civil unions, we believe that that is a function of civil rights. And to that extent, there shall be no discrimination against any person, whether gay, whether straight, whether black, whether white, whether short, whether tall, for any reason in this country. And that is the position of our government. Prime Minister, it's been a real pleasure to talk to you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. The elephant in the room, what a lot of Western climate diplomats tell me is that leaders like yourself also carry a responsibility. Why are vulnerable countries still so debt stricken? Why is there still corruption? What is your response to that? You really want me to answer you? I do. Okay. Why is it that every time we talk about countries from the south, the first allegation is corruption? Last time I checked, in the USA and the UK and Europe, they're riddled with corruption, but nobody says that they're not capable of achieving their objectives because of corruption. Why is it that we're not talking about the fact that these countries became independent, having allowed those countries that colonized them to extract significant portions of their wealth, such that we had no proper housing, no proper education, no proper health care systems, no proper legal systems, no proper go across the whole street. And certainly nothing to do with building social capital like community development and cultural enterprises. And what has happened is therefore that we have spent the time since independence trying to give our people what the global north has taken for granted and has supported by the extrication of centuries of wealth to give their people out of our blood, sweat and tears. Now, when our blood, sweat and tears finances the Industrial Revolution, and the Industrial Revolution then causes the climate crisis, and then I have to pay for the consequences of the climate crisis because of the Industrial Revolution financed by our blood, sweat and tears, then I think they have no moral authority to tell me anything about the financing of the climate or about why we don't have enough. Is it anger over this that fuels your energy? Anger? Absolutely not. Unfairness lack of justice. They're not angry. I'm just disappointed that humankind still wants to believe that there's one world for a set of people and another world for another. Because we are capable of being, as one, our first Prime Minister said, friends of all and satellites of none. But it's not just Barbados that's moving closer no. to China, it's the whole of the Caribbean. I mean, it's, it's the whole investment world. from China has gone up many folds. But so in is the, the whole world. If, if, you, if I look correctly, I think the Chinese hold a large, large percentage of assets within the United States of America and a large amount of their treasuries as well. So for you to focus on the Caribbean or Africa with China without recognizing the role that China is playing in Europe or in the North Atlantic countries is a bit disingenuous and really reflects more that we are seen as pawns, regrettably, rather than countries with equal capacity to determine our destiny and to be part and parcel of that global conversation to fight the global issues of the day, like climate and the pandemic. All right, well, that's put me in my place, hasn't no, it? No, not at all, Mr. Mayor Motley. Thank you. <laughs> not at all, my dear. That's all right, thank you. We'll go to our next question. Provide me with a bit of relief. Thank you. Uh, Kevon Henry, your question.
Hello guys, uh, I believe that you have watched this clip about uh, this president and you can see the way uh, these journalists are really really arrogant and they are somehow, uh, I don't know if they are stupid or what, what should I say in, this, in these videos but one guys, what I've come to is that uh, we as Africans, uh, Jamaicans, uh, Barbados we are usually asked this silly question such as uh, if your country pass this gay LGBTQ uh, uh, to, to into law and I get a lot a lot a lot of uh, anger and why is this question usually asked to these African leaders look at uh, our president uh, Ruto was asked this question look at the president of, uh, of uh, Ghana Th those people have always been interviewed even the South Africans have, have always been asked these questions so this means that these uh, journalists or these as a United States or Kingdom or the in uh, the European region, they are usually degrade us. Why do I say this? Because uh, they, I have never heard an Arabian being asked this. Because as uh, these Arabians, they have usually taken their religion very serious, such that they don't allow people to be in those organizations, such as the gay or LGBTQ. Actually, I have heard that these people usually stone people in the public. So it is really, really dis dis disappointing. And even you can see in this clip that this lady was really, really disappointed. Okay, now when you come to these countries, uh, you'll see that in the second clip that he talked about corruption. And guys, uh, I have a lot of things to talk about corruption because uh, I'm really, really devastated. And even in our country here in Kenya, I'm really, really dis devastated. Why do I say this is because uh, our president have been, uh, I don't know what, what he really, really did, but the thing is that he has given these positions like CS, treasurer, the, the people who he knows, the people who helped her or who helped him com campaign during those campaign uh, time. Now, he has given these positions because of loyalty, loyalty, returning a favor because these people help. So it has resulted to a point where these leaders, majority of the leaders, in this uh, in this government are really really corrupt. Where, when these people are campaigning, they never had cars, they never had big stomachs like we are seeing right now. But the thing that is really really making Kenyans to be angry because uh, I also wanted to tackle this uh, in this video because a lot of young generation that is young gen are are coming out and protesting because we are just seeing these people really really exploit exploiting us like they're telling us to have high taxes they're raising taxes into a commodities like bread like i have seen most of the international uh, news saying that we as kenyans uh, we are being taxed even to bread now that is not even the main thing the main thing is that when our president was moving to united states for a, a special trip and uh, that united states he hired a car, he hired, he hired a aeroplane which was costing almost 200 million dollars. That is almost one, 900 something million dollars. And this is what may angered majority of Kenyans because why, why do you want to tax us? You exploit our, use our money, exploit, and you use our money carelessly. Yet, this money which you are taxing us, we are not seeing any development. Actually, I have not seen any, even any development. What I have seen these people doing is that they are trying to commission or to commission things which were done with the other regimes and even majority of these uh, leaders are really really don't i don't care and they are really also arrogant they are not telling us what is they are answering us in a stupid way so this is something that has made uh, africa or kenya very very angry and that's why you find that there's a lot of protest so corruption is something that is really really bad and that's what i wanted to tackle in now, when you go to Jamaica, even Jamaicans are really, really hungry. What I've not seen is the Caribbeans doing that. But in recent, recent, I've seen a lot of corrupt leaders in, Ke in Africa. And that's why this guy was asking, what are we doing with this corruption? Because you'll find that a lot of leaders are really, really going out, uh, taking loans. Then they're coming up in the name of they're going to fund or they're going to construct things. Yet, these things are not done. They are not done at all. We are not seeing any physical, physical, leave alone emotional. We are not seeing any physical infrastructure. Yet, day to day, they are moving here, traveling here, up, 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 down, up and down in the name of taking loans. And these loans are ending up in their pockets and even some of the political leaders. Okay, that's, that's one. And uh, 
politic uh, you'll find that politicians uh, usually tell us that uh, we tighten our belt because they are trying to pass some of the laws which at least are going to accrue or make a nation move forward and we as citizens as we tighten our belt these people are losing their belt where they are becoming very very fat because of from from taxpayers money so there's a lot of things that happen in this video and that's why I was just bringing it out and telling you that the thing that corruption need to start from these leaders who we are usually installed by these uh, Western leaders or these puppets where you find that after being installed they become a puppet they are being drafted a bill you like for example someone come to your house and give you this is what you need to do in your house he doesn't care he doesn't care what uh, these people are doing in the house well so that's what is happening in Kenya that there's a bill that the people majority of people believe it was drafted from outside and there are so much questions why are these people doing this is because uh, is it our present becoming a puppet to these people now uh, in this video uh, I got some comments from these people and I just wanted to read for you here so that you can see that uh, there's uh, they are making a lot of sense okay one is that one needs to understand the the role and function of journalists to understand what this reporter legitimately did like she put forward a questions and information that uh, the general and layman wants answered and yet and says so it was not her uh, uh, but the people who spoke for he spoke for so i'm glad the journalists accepted the hell with her and respected respected uh, of trying to argue with this uh one monthly so this is how it should be done with these journalists you you are uh, they ask you a silly question you return with a silly answer like as a jamaican and uh, this is someone as a jamaican living abroad and hearing comments in a similar vein from others about not just uh not just my island my island but the caribbean it does my heart it does my heart good to see this verbal beat down with down with such effortless grace so Zenba led herself down, Prime Minister Motley made Africa and Caribbean very, very proud. Then there's a mother one say that, uh, Madam Prime Minister, it will be, it will like, I would like to join the many thousands of Guineans for standing up for democracy in native countries. The, the way you answer that journalist was pure gem. Brilliance is to me a, a while to describe the reply. Keep up the good works and may God bless you and guide and protect our graceful Prime Minister. Nothing but love and administration from Prime Minister Motley from Jamaica. Continue to stand strong. Then don't be afraid to handle them. We, we uh, Caribbean people can make decisions for ourselves. We don't need any nation to tell us how to be and who to deal with. Yes, it is just the same, same thing with Africans. We need to start standing for our own self. There's no way that we will be keep be thrown fear that this when we do this, these people will do this. When we do this, these people will do this. We need to start making our, our own decisions, starting right from the leaders, the political leaders. There's no one who should come to your country and give you a garden and tell you, uh, do this, do this, do this so that your country can move forward. We know we are 200 years behind in terms of the technology and even development. But it is high time we as Africans, we need to stop having these people gi giving us guidance every time and then. It is in this event that majority of African leaders become a puppet. And that's how the African resources is usually, usually stolen by these high-end politicians. Then if, if the U.S. had a, a president of uh, caliber of Mia, Mia Motley, the world will not be in the catastrophe situation in, in it today. Like, sadly, there's simply no one of the ability and caliber of Mia Motley vis visible or horizontal in the U.S. The U.S. is acting as the largest terrorist and <laughs> the one that's in other crises has said uh, his biggest fear is that this time, when the, when the U.S. goes down, it will take the rest of the world with it. I really appreciate leaders who are intelligent and self-centered and assure that they are easily and wise and have and conduct news reparations must happen. Now, uh, I also love leaders who listen to the ground. That's why in our own country, we have something let's call 
national intelligence. These are people who survey and listen to what the what the the ground is saying, so that the president can do. But here it is very very opposite. Even as people are protesting here and there, the president is not listening. Our president is not listening. And one day our country will go down. And one day some of the countries will be liberalized because I've realized that majority of countries, majority of our uh, of Africa are yet not independent, fully, fully independent. What do I mean that is because uh, there are some of the, how do I say, bases. What bases? Uh, soldiers' bases. I don't know how we call them. There are some of the bases in Africa where the outside uh, people are training here. In your own land, they're training, killing your people and terrorizing. Yeah, so there's a lot of war bases in Africa. And then, the funny part is that we as Africans, majority, you know that, like Congo, they are so much, they have a lot of minerals and they are doing very, very well in terms of minerals because this, I think, that is the largest country that produces minerals. But the sadly, part is that majority of Congos are really, uh, are really, really struggling to even find a meat, to even find a meal in a day. So, what do I mean that these people are usually used as a cheap labor? And they don't even have industries in their country to, to manufacture such things. These minerals are usually exported outside. It is through these leaders that we need to start changing our world and start from corruption. When we, we, clear, we clear corruption, things will be fine. Guys, I didn't have much to say. And I was really, really sadly, I was really sad. And that we are taken as stupid. When will this end? Thank you.